actually I prepared for two hours speech. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, Reverend Park said I should have 10 minutes. <laughs> um, I have been talking about adoption my lifetime, so uh, if I say that again, then you will, many of you will say, oh, you repeat that story again. But uh, today, because it's a, a ministry, so it's 10 years. And uh, Reverend Park said that I talked uh, for the first time and it, we had open house for this program. So I remembered I did something, but I do not remember what I talked. Um, <clears throat> when uh, I, I was involved in adoption, I never thought I will be doing that for my lifetime. 12 years in Korea and almost 29 and a half years, so 30 years in America, so 42 years. And now I live the uh, half of my life in Korea, half life in America next year. So that way, um, I should speak a better English, but I'm not. <laughs> um, uh, now about nine, 10 years ago, um, we had a new pastor, young, and then he taught some of the, uh, the, the classes that he said, you have to write three pages of uh, when and how you uh, invited Jesus Christ as your savior. So I said, are you kidding? Why I have to share with you about my own uh, 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 happenings. I didn't. And every day, whenever he see me, he says, homework, Mrs. San, homework, Mrs. San. So I did start to write. Then I started to write from young age, five uh, years old, I went to the uh, Sunday school because I couldn't speak well at the time. Very slow and uh, murmured a lot. So um, I went back then and then I wrote down and wrote down and then I came to a Korean War. This year is the 60th year after Korean War and I was 11 and a half years old at the time. And that Korean War changed my life, maybe many of your life, especially adopted people and adoptive parents. Your life has been changed because of Korean War you were adopted, you became American citizen, and adopted parents, you become the parents of Korean born children. So your culture is a mixture of American and Korean. And my life has been all depending on Korean War. Because my father raised me from very young age to become a lawyer. And I couldn't talk very well. So that's why he sent me to church. And uh, during the Korean War, I saw so many babies were abandoned on the snow bank. And I didn't know they will die within two, three hours on the snow, and no one could take care of them. And uh, I loved the children. I took care of my own siblings, the younger uh, siblings. I couldn't help. But I had those guilt feeling so much. And that made me to become a social worker. But I did not know I will do work for adoption. But you know, God needed me to become an adoption <laughs> social worker. I was hired by other kinds of social work agency, and they did not have a job later for me. Then I was hired by adoption social work agency. So I started from the very beginning, 1964, from now, I work for adoption. All these things went into just like a movie into my mind, and who made all these decisions? It's not me. And I only worked day and night and weekend. Only regret was I did not pay too much time. I did not give too much time for my children, but then, God blessed them. I did not spend any time, but they are fine people. They are married, have children. And what can I ask more from the God? 
He took care of them. I never did anything for them. I worked day and night and weekends for adoption. So my son, uh, I adopted, but he thought uh, I worked adoption agents, but he never thought he was adopted by us. He thought that was mom's work. <laughs> so that way, adoption was my whole life. And my uh, late husband uh, said, you are very lucky then, uh, because you are blessed to work for life of a human being. And he adored all the children who came from uh, Korea and their parents. He said, America is blessed because of their love for children from anywhere, especially from Korea. That much adoption was my life and his life. And uh, then writing down when I became a real good Christian, born again Christian. And uh, I was spiritually uh, changed many times, but this time, writing down my own life, I found out God blessed me and he used me for those children who were dying on snowbank. So that way, I cried so many nights, writing two lines of the stories, and then cried two hours. So almost after three weeks, I finished not three pages, 78 pages. And I gave it to a, a pastor, see, I cannot make it shorter. And he wrote down with a red pencil, did you see Jesus Christ at this time? Did you know this was from him? And all those questions, all red people, and said, you have to answer again for this. Second page was 34 pages. After all those were done, I felt free. Uh, when we are really had touched love from God and from our Heavenly Father, and we had a strong feeling of forgiven, forgiveness. And uh, then I felt to free my life. You, I don't know how many of you felt to free like I did. I am always in the morning waking up from sleep, I'm free. Then all my time, effort, energy went to young people. I don't know how many of you are complaining because you were adopted into American family home. There are some people do that, but when we look back, there is no progress. There is no happiness. My good uh, gift from God was I never look back because I did my best for each time whenever I was in the situation, like school and job, every single time I was just inside of the world. So I never had anything to regret what I did before. If I do, I have a few things, but I don't stay there. I always think about today and tomorrow. I am 72 now, but I have a lot of tomorrow plan. And I am too busy with the tomorrow. I cannot be sad or regret many things. So um, some of our young people say, oh, I complain, adoption agency, I'm not happy, all those. Hey, don't, don't think about that too long. You can do that, but not too long. Think about today, think, think about tomorrow, and who you can help. When we help somebody, God helps us, me and you and everybody. So this uh, uh, program, if you made, several or even one, even 10 or 100.